Okay, can everyone hear me? And can everyone see the screen okay? Hello, Justin. Hi, everyone. Yep, hi, Carla. Hi, yep, everyone. Oh, yep, people I all know. Trust you all going well. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Stephen. Okay, so welcome to the sovereign individual and entering the new world and coming out unscathed. So this webinar I put together just because of what's going on and so many changes. It's a free webinar just to really go through and let's just look at what's yeah look really the next stage as to what we've got to do obviously there's so many changes happening in the world right now and it's a wonderful time to really take some major steps in your life but like never before i'm sure we would all agree we're in a whole new world right now and part of a major transition who's feeling that right now and feeling major shifts major changes and just the way that the world is changing so radically right now yeah, quite a few people. Like who's noticing the, the big changes in markets, just in the economy, the way everything's happening. Yeah. So definitely a critical time. And the truth is in times gone past in history, there's nearly always casualties, like large amounts of casualties at times like this, because the bulk of people just really don't either see it coming or those who see what's going on just don't take enough action and do what's necessary to move through it. So really this webinar is today about showing the problems and coming up with a practical path forward to really be able to address and deal with what's basically ahead. So this is not a financial advice webinar or anything of that kind. If you want that, you really got to go and see a licensed advisor. What we're allowed to do is give financial education so that's really none of this is personal it's just financial education so just get rid of distraction just going to go for about 90 minutes we'll take questions and then we will go through um the next step from there and basically have show you the next steps and how you can work with us if you'd like to work with us so we will be making an offer at the end um or an opportunity just to work further with us if you would like to but we'll give you plenty of notice about it at the question time. So this is what we're going to be covering by and large today. So the new economy post pandemic. So really about how it's going to be radically different from the old, just like when, when the industrial to information age took place. So there's been a couple of major shifts that have happened really in the last few hundred years. There's been the shift basically into the industrial age where machines took over from people. And then we're online, the shift into the information age took over from industrial. And now we're really entering what I call this information age and it's becoming established and almost like a whole brand new level of the age again. So it's a very radical change in the world and a lot of people are gonna be caught out and just aren't taking enough action. And I'm not promising that what I'll be sharing today will be easy to go ahead and do. The solution is simple but 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 it's never easy to implement and my experience is that most people won't do the hard things that's needed to go to that next stage and hopefully the fact you're here suggests that you're ready to do that so we're going to be teaching or sharing about that how to prepare for what's ahead eliminate vulnerability and a bit about the businesses and investments that will thrive in the great reset or what's ahead some structure protect their wealth and the importance of it and really just about this whole money grab that's going to be increasing and the steps to get ready and protect yourself because if you think it's been interesting the last 18 months which it certainly has been it's going to get even more interesting in the next 18 months ahead and i expect to see erosions of rights or governments doing that which you almost would not imagine as possible and very simply because the popular the, the country has not really pushed back in Australia and in much of the Western world and only to a very limited degree. 
and there's many other factors that I won't go into that today, but I certainly don't see, think we've seen the worst of it yet. I feel we have a lot more to go yet. And nothing to be scared of, more just to be prepared for. Who has that feeling and who here is ready to take some action and actually get educated and take some and move forward and actually do what's do the hard things that's needed. Okay, yep, great. Getting a few yeses. So yes, there's going to be hard steps that you will have to actually take here. And I don't like hide that for a sec because generally the best time to take the hard steps is when it's easy. Um, the worst time is when it's hard. Probably a very good example I'm seeing that right now in my life is my 17 year old, one of my 17 year old sons, I've got twins at that age, is a very good crypto trader. What's interesting with him though, is he was taught that from, from young by his mentor and by me. And so he, while everyone else was excited with the crypto boom and they were leveraging heavily, he wasn't. He was playing it safe. And he's pretty much in his mentoring group just been consistently making money, consistently profiting, and so well protected that even the really bad trades, he ends up being okay on. So this is all about, in the time right now, where it's funny enough, despite all that's going on, we haven't entered the worst of it yet, and there's still time right now to take some steps that you'll be one of the ones that move through this relatively smoothly compared to everyone else. So just a bit about myself. Like I said, we'll be going for about 90 minutes today. So I've had over 30 years of experience, led to say the least, a very interesting life. And I've had 10 years experience to the tax office as an auditor before I saw the light and moved out of the darkness and came over and started working to help people minimize taxes, grow their wealth and become sovereign. I'd been on that journey for about 20 years. When I left the tax office, I very quickly worked out there was something badly wrong with the world. I was at the time going through some like pretty serious health issues. I couldn't work that much at that time. So I used the time to join a series of off the grid underground movements. I taught myself everything I could about how the system really worked. And I very quickly worked out that, yeah, by about 2003, four, I was convinced we we're heading for a fairly major crash of the current system we're living in now and what I would call a semi-apocalyptic time in the world. And I started preparing for that back in 2002, 2003. And basically Grace, who's my business partner and former wife, she did the same, it took some fairly radical steps. We taught our kids from young and yeah, all of them now say, gosh, we're glad we learned this at young. We would otherwise be really worked up with what's going on in the world right now. So really this is about being willing to take the steps, learn what needs to be done and start moving now to protect yourself. And as one of my great mentors once told me, if you assume that you're in a crisis when you're not and you act accordingly, then when you hit a crisis, you'll be fine. And that's the secret to all kinds of success. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever we're heading for a crisis beyond crisis. So I'm seeing questions coming through on specific issues. Just so you know, I won't be answering them to drop the flow of the webinar. I'll only answer questions that, that go with the flow of the webinar. However, feel free to keep those questions um, until question time, which we'll be giving at the 90 minute mark. So we are heading for a major economic meltdown like has not been seen for 90 years. And this is not just me saying this, just about any economist from Harry Dent to Donald Trump when he was riding with Robert Kiyosaki to Robert Kiyosaki and Second Chance to Jim Rickards to Bill Bonner. There's numerous ones now who are saying this because every 90 years, when you're living in a paper-based system, things get reset and starting again. So, and every 45 years, a partial reset. And as you'll see shortly, we're, we're pretty much due for one now. And normally those situations are brutal absolutely brutal what happens to people and vast amount of people end up completely caught out by it and in complete shock and economically ruined and vulnerable. So on top of that, we're at a transition period into the information age fully, or what I would call the age of the sovereign individual and the breakdown of the nationwide state or the 
major world orders, which I think people are very quickly getting fed up with and realizing that trying to build a world based on a large population all being governed in one place, like I live in Western Australia, and I don't know if you know how big this is, but West Australia is just gigantic. It's like the biggest, I think, individual state region in the world. Takes you, you know, a long time to drive up from one one end to the other, both ways. And the very idea that one person sitting in an office in a small, tiny city where two million people are crammed in like sheep can then be giving laws for the rest of the whole state is just absurd. And you're going to be seeing a lot of breakdowns, but while that's happening, a lot of turmoil. So we're in a major transition period over the next 10 years. And I'm finding not just economists, but even what I call um, people who are psychic or timeline readers are finding the same thing. So, like I said, back in 2003, I got myself moving there. I did a webinar back in 2000. I was doing webinar, I was doing seminars live back in 2005 talking about it. I did a major one in December 2018, and by 2019, I was so convinced things were going to start melting down that in September 2019, I be actually began a club to help people get ready for this. And the ones who are in it now are very glad they were in it. So just because I was so certain it would happen. And of course, 2020, when everything happened, the way it happened, no, it wasn't quite what I expected, but I knew that something like that was going to happen. So... The reality is, if you're not ready for everything, um, for it, you could lose everything you've worked for, along with most, if not all, of your hard-won rights and freedoms. And seeing a much higher, like what Mr. Biden's doing in America, taxes, and just governments taking money. And this is what happens when civilizations break down and things change over. Governments try and hold on to the end and power groups, and they will seize whatever they can. So it's going to get interesting over the next little while. Who's who's kind of who who's very aware and educated of the stuff I'm talking about when I mention things like cyber pandemic and great reset and major changes of a sovereign individual that's coming and know that you're you really going to have to take some fairly radical steps. My guess is most of you haven't actually done enough, and that's just not being you know, really haven't done enough. I mean, who he knows deep down, you just haven't done enough for, and you need to do a lot more to be ready for this. So who, who if they're truthful, just knows there's a lot more to go. Yeah, quite a few people. It's good if you're honest. I, I always assume I haven't done enough and I keep going over things all the time. And the truth is, we can only do so much. I'm going to turn my camera off now just so I can focus on the slides and I'll bring it back on a bit later at question time. So in the coming days of the new economy, as the world regresses 200 years, uh, which is really what I'm seeing, we're moving virtually from where the last number of years in the world, we'd all agree there's just been a lot of freedoms for people. Yeah, we've had our moments where people have been able to travel, do stuff, and you don't really appreciate what you lose until you lose it. And we're effectively gone back almost to what I'm seeing, a semi-form of um, 1800s feudalism. And this is what's been happening. So in the coming days, for the next little while before the changeover happens, there's going to be in many parts of the world where you're going to either be a sovereign or a slave, not in between. And this is what's called the class, like many of the third world countries that have happened. So sobering times. And definitely time to do something about it. So there'll be no in between. You're either going to be sovereign and in command of your life, and no matter what governments do, even though they kind of make you a bit nervous, you'll stand firm. There was an old parable written in the Holy Bible where Christ actually said to his disciples that the wise man and the foolish man, the wise man built his house upon a rock. So he built it on very strong foundations, much harder work, took a bit more work, had to adjust the house for the rock and do chipping and things like that. But he said when the storm came, the house stood and didn't collapse. By contrast, the foolish man, he said, built his house upon sand to make it quick and easy. When the storm came, the house was swept away. Which one are you? 
is your house built on a secure foundation of strong, stable structures, stuff that you know works, or is it really built on the flimsy foundation that you're just really hoping is going to work out and live day by day, so to speak, just hoping it works? That's something for you to contemplate and really think through. So, The Sovereign Individual. So this was a book written in 1995 that really discussed this transition that was going to happen and what the steps would happen. It's quite remarkable when you read this book and just see how much what they said in 1995 has actually happened. They compare what you're seeing to the collapse of the Roman Empire and they go through that in depth and by the time they finish, and yes, it's hard to find a copy because everyone knows this book has given the blueprint to get through this time. So it's a heavy reading book, mind you. And the, what, if in simple terms, they discuss the collapse of the Roman Empire and about the fact that governments will pretty much turn into the crime syndicates, just taking people's money, removing their rights as if they're nothing. But they said eventually all that would stop and it would collapse as governments will just completely fall apart for lack of money and they'll get taken over. But until they do, they're going to get pretty unhappy and just be grabbing money where they can. So that's the times that we're in now. And they'll dress it up, of course, just like they've dressed up, you know, saying that it, creating this as a pandemic and to be able to do what they've done. So in the same way, they'll be dressing it up like, yep, yeah, a wealth tax, you know, to help make this difference or help do this. But really, it's just to create and sustain an unworkable business that's going down. So what they said was that the collapse of the Roman Empire would repeat themselves. They compared it to now with a zombie apocalypse, which in simple terms means more and more people doing absolutely F all productively but living off the wealth of other people which is socialism they predicted there'd just be more people and government serve public servants living off other people's labor more greed debauchery unashamed corruption the roman soldiers are more interested in orgies and big salaries by the time they collapse than they were about fighting anymore deprivation of civil liberties it got worse in rome horrendous stuff was done laziness and complacency they predicted an increase um, in access to information. And we're seeing this now, the fact you're sitting here on this webinar, listening to me in various parts in your own homes or cafes or whatever, while I'm sitting here in my own home, shows how much the world is different now. As once upon a time, you would have had to fly in or I would have had to fly out somewhere near you and teach this stuff. And life was like that for me even 15 years ago. Um, in fact, even 10 years ago, I was still flying out places and doing that. So a race to the bottom, you'll see more, some, some countries will either go really high, some will just drop their rates massively to attract people in. Um, they predict the rise of digital currencies, national governments falling apart, and sovereign communities growing up everywhere. I predict that West Australia and places like Northern Queensland will probably succeed and they might even break up within the midst of that state or move into a much different form of government. But in the meantime, they'll just grab anything they can. People starting to operate independently of governments, becoming more savvy. Rome eventually was invaded by a ruthless foe. So when you see what's happening today, it's just simple. There's just a more powerful, more organized group of people taking over the world because Western civilization has become extremely greedy extremely self-interested by and large and very mentally weak and lazy and the fact that a government could get up do what they've done um do things to the election in front of the eyes of people and not really much was done just shows you that we really are at the moment falling apart and something good will come out of it but going getting to that point isn't necessarily all that fun and certainly, and we haven't learned from communism. We just haven't. And Dr. Rogers said back in 1931, you just can't legislate the poor into freedom by legislating the wealthy out of freedom. Like saying, if we take yours away, it's the oldest thing in the book. In the 1960s, the mayor of Detroit, because there were so many poor communities, tried this trick. 
tried to increase taxes, bring laws upon the wealthy, and to, and to give money into the poorer um, communities. Um, well, guess what happened? The rich just left Detroit and they went and lived in another state. And the um, poorer communities just used the money and just increased crime and just blew it. So within about three years, Detroit was just an absolute ruin and it took a long time. And some states still hasn't really recovered from that time. So when one person receives without working for, another person must work for without receiving. The government cannot give to anybody anything that they first don't take from someone else or print um, out of some fictitious money system, which then dilutes everybody else's wealth. When half of the people get the idea they don't have to work anymore because they can sit at home and governments or others can take care of them, um, and when the other half gets the idea it doesn't do any good to work, because someone else will get what they work for. That, my dear friend, is the end of a nation. You can't multiply wealth by dividing it. I know many businesses right now can't even get staff because staff generally, by the time they paid the money to drive to work, they work 40 hours, I think, well, certainly when JobKeep was going on, they're getting basically paid to stay at home. In America, that's happening heavily right now. So you're going to have consequences of this in the long term. And rest assured that we will that we will reap our day of judgment will come for doing that. So it's being prepared for that and being the wise ones that know what's coming. And like I said, the US was just this was just insane, but it happened in front of our eyes. We're seeing global debt soaring. We're seeing the US government is printing money and just giving it pretty much away now and holding something up that really is just like I said, at some stage, the piper will be blowing and wanting to be paid. So in America, at one stage in one year, there was a 700% rise in membership of the Socialist Party. AOC and her little gang of raiders are certainly having fun and creating havoc over there. And it doesn't bode well for wealthy in Western cultures. So you really do... More and more clients I'm finding are either doing major steps to restructure their life and businesses or are even moving offshore or simplifying their lives. Because the wealthy see what's coming and they're like, oh shit. And they know they're going to move their asses. And eventually they start happening. So originally people are just fleeing privately and quietly. Eventually they're just a stampede. And this is what happened in the Roman Empire. I know Melbourne's got a stampede happening. They're saying that... There's just so many people flooding up into Queensland, WA. I mean, Brisbane people in WA are not particularly happy because rentals have almost disappeared off the market because people are flooding in, renting houses, and pretty much not being able to get in there or buy houses. That's what's happening. And Melbourne is fast emptying, and people can't fly. And, yeah, 37,200 Victorians moved away, Kathy said, yeah, I'm surprised it's not more. So I think it probably is. So people, when they start to realize that their security is at risk, they go, shit, I better move out of here. So I'm sure most of you have heard about the Great Reset. If you haven't, just say in the text chat that you haven't. Otherwise, um, who here is very concerned about this or knows what I'm talking about with this and is like, hmm, this thing doesn't particularly, this bothers me. Yeah, a few raising their hands. And yep. That is, yep. Yeah, Schwab's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a crazy dude. I would agree with that, Justin. So, as I said at the beginning, the only way to avoid hyperinflation and inflation is starting to increase in the US. Some figures just came out right now. Um, eventually, you start to see hyperinflation. Because once people realize that money's being printed, they just start increasing their prices en masse. And people love it as first. Like, if you go through history, we haven't learned much as humans. The more people love this system because they, they can see the chance to make money on stock markets, on cryptos. But once they work out their dollar is devaluing, they start moving it out, and the remaining citizens are then left to carry the can. That's what just inevitably happens um, as people start to realize this. It's just a big Ponzi scheme. So Mr. Schwab says it's a great chance to reshape the world. 
and he pretty much says reset the capitalism which is basically saying it's time to take a more socialistic approach is really the other way of looking at that and the best description i've heard of what this means from a mentor stephen pettit who works with me in the global wealth club is the world is moving very similar to what russia has done in many parts of the world we're either going to be the, going to be the government you're going to be a big tech oligarch or you're going to be everyone else and the big tech oligarchs will be the very rich the ones that the governments will allow to continue because they'll need some very good business people and investors to be able to run the infrastructure because governments and every communist society collapse because they were horrible at running businesses and that's one thing that putin did very well he was able to bring in effectively a communist society but prosper reasonably okay and that's because of the oligarch model and what the inside word is is that's the plan for the great reset a very similar model to russia so this is what they say you'll own nothing but you'll be happy so in other words your assets will belong to the elite or to a government group of people but they will take care of you if you are a good boy and girl so this is what they say which really just means when you read between the lines um with the great reset when you actually read it that there will be some kind of um steering the market to fairer outcomes which what that really means in simple terms is increasing taxes doing more money printing um they've even mentioned contract tracing specifically and coordinated vaccination programs They've talked about dealing with a cyber pandemic when all banks, internets go offline, electricity grids and fuel and all that kind of stuff. That's one of the things that I might add myself concerns me a little bit, um, especially. So I've been doing work on those other things now that I've protected myself and other stuff on cyber pandemic and things like that, that they're talking about. And so there's a lot of things that lie ahead when you read this World Economic Forum and increasing taxes. So who would agree that it's more important than ever now to be a sovereign individual? Yeah, hopefully most of you would be like, hmm, this is definitely the time to do it. So, just to explain what it means to be sovereign in simple terms you can govern yourself with no interference from outside bodies that's what it basically means so the full right and power to govern without interference from outside sources so that means if your health it means a sovereign individual would make its own decisions about their body about what they eat what goes into their body they take full accountability for it a sovereign individual takes full responsibility for their finances they don't leave themselves vulnerable to having anyone tell them if you don't go and do x y or z you can't work anymore and have the right to earn a living they've got all that covered they've got passive income coming in they've got a business that works and they know they've got to keep working on it. So if you're not taking steps to minimize your tax and protect your hard-earned wealth and keep governments far from it, your future is basically in great jeopardy and the governments aren't really hiding it anymore. And you're gonna find it far more blatant. You're gonna be seeing governments even talking things like Team Australia, Team America, whatever. You know, we just gotta do this, we're all in this together. You've heard all that with this whole thing and their crazy ads for the um the jabs like we're all in this together i was watching baseball the other day i love watching a bit of baseball and i almost pissed myself laughing there was some ad on the billboard that said saying you know get the vaccine take it for the team and had this picture of smiling people and it was all over the baseball things and i'm like <laughs> it's kind of like being in a comedy movie but that's um you're not hiding it anymore and they'll do the same with your money I can assure you it'll be like um yeah it'll be the same thing like take it for the team yeah we're bringing greater taxes but we're all in this together you know we've got these problems here we're all in this together 
you've got money. It's not fair that others here should not have money. And it's going to sound really, really good. It will sound good to, the, to many because it will be dressed up well. They pay good money to get marketing. Some of the best marketing I've ever seen these days is coming from government organizations. It's very good, you know, and it's, it sounds, it sounds plausible. So it's really critical. It's, it's the beginning of the end of a civilization. There's no two ways about this now. And it's critical to take steps, get educated and take the steps. And if necessary, invest in the mentoring that you need to protect your wealth before it's just way too late, not way too late. And these are just so many examples about if you don't even tax plan, which I find most people do. Investing 100,000 for 10 years at 20% per annum. The difference how much you have at the end. Over 20 years, I mean, taxes absolutely destroy your wealth, but not just in the immediate term, but in the long term. High taxes, it's, a, it's an absolute crippler of your wealth. And again, you don't want to break the law, but you've got to actually do that. Um, so you've got to do that. So what lies ahead from here? Now, this is what I did last year, and I put my own words, but seven reasons why things are going to get worse than everyone thinks, but then I will be balancing this is why I think the, the end result will be a lot better than everyone thinks. So brace yourself a little bit for this part. This is the ugly stuff, but you're going to hear the really great stuff. So our current money system and quantitative easing, like there's it, no quantitative easing system in history has worked. In other words, when you've got basically government printing money, which is what it is, at ridiculous amounts of money, you always have to reset the economy. I mean, there's no way other than resetting the economy. But, and in saying that, resetting an economy isn't a new concept, and it's not necessarily always bad. If done correctly and responsibly and properly, it can actually be healthy and help an economy. There's stories in history where resetting an economy actually made a major difference to the quality of life to people because it was done by a responsible, very just king who understood things. But when you're talking about one number and leap for their benefit, it's ugly for the citizens, as we saw in 1933, and this current one will be even worse. History shows us how it works. And when the same thing happens over and over again through history, it's going to happen again. Cyprus, money printing, big loans, badly hit, the government just woke up one day and took 20% of their citizens' money from their bank accounts, just like that, just one day, to bail out with the debt. Venezuela, and the socialism, and just pretty much, what's interesting with Venezuela is when it was happening, people were warning back in about 2012 what, what was coming for Venezuela when Maduro took over as a socialist. And the very wealthy in Venezuela were moving out slowly, bit by bit. But just think about what happens when you get a brain drain and the best customers of a country leave, the rest of the people, there's still plenty of people um, who have to then live off the money, and be, but there's less money to live off. So this is what ends up, it collapses completely. I have no doubt we're heading for some fairly unfortunate times in this, so to speak. So, Balin versus Bala, yep, Venezuela. So the wealthy know the lessons of history. They know about these financial matters where to store it. They know direction of markets now to choose the haven. They have a plan B. They have a preferred place to store their assets but they know the realities of life. They have a plan to not only minimize tax, but remain safe and ready in case it hits the fan. Here's just a calendar of events from history you can look at. Stock market collapsed after unprecedented boom, currency reset, Roosevelt issues order seizing gold. This was their kind of great reset. It was around 1930 to 33. Um, the big one happened in 33. The gold standard removed that completely made our money vulnerable. Um, dollar pegging currency reset. So I'm predicting myself that there's a very good chance around 23, 24 that we're going to see some kind of reset. It could even happen before, but I reckon around there, based on my calculations. So it's unavoidable. 
it can only go down in a major way um, in the years ahead. Yes, there's going to be some spikes in the meantime. There's going to be a melt up. There's going to be opportunities to make money. And these things can go for longer than people think. But I remember when cryptos were going nuts and Bitcoin was well over 60. And then it went down to about 52. And all the cryptocurrencies groups and advisors that I know and talk to, you're all saying, yeah, no, look, it's still going to be a bull market. It's just a temporary retracement. I remember thinking they may be right, but I'm a little bit nervous about what's going on here. I decided I'm a little bit nervous about this. So I, because I was nervous about the whole thing, I was selling off cryptos as it was higher on the possibility. And in the short term, I missed out on some further growth. But believe you me, when this market has crashed, I've been pretty fine because I've I've done the difficult I've done the, the difficult steps when it was easy to do it. It's much harder when the markets have gone down a lot. So it's really important to do that. You know, it can only go down in a major way in the years ahead. And yes, you're going to see some more gains, but the best time to be cashing out or rejigging your portfolio is when markets are doing pretty damn well. So witnessing the collapse of a very great civilization. The other third one is demographics, entitlement, and experience for this current generation. So people here don't know what happened in 1933, unless they're like much older, they've got family, but they told them about it. They just don't realize what it was like. Most people, in fact, even haven't really seen anything other than a relative boom, apart from brief little setbacks in the GSC and others for the last 40 odd years. So that's what this current generation is used to. They're not ready for this. Of course, COVID showed the vulnerability of the world because we're pretty much, we import a lot of fuel. Some countries import a lot of foods. Um, supply chains have slowed down. So yeah, any more of this kind of COVID. Um, you may have seen the fuel um, ransom attack in America. They couldn't get fuel um, in parts of America. You know, this, we're very vulnerable right now. I expect to see more of that. The, the fact that so many people are speculating on the investments and their debt and things like that, and um, the fact that so many people are on margin, it destroyed the world and the Great Depression. And in fact, at one stage, very limited margin in America because of that. Whereas now margin and leverage has been coming back in its droves. So that never ends well, never. And a debt. Moral order, personal ethics, greed, corruption, debauchery has changed and is rife. Um, and that's never good for society. That's what happened in Rome. And same in Rome, the loss of civil liberties and freedoms and outbreaks of civil unrest in parts of the world. It's just never good, like really not. And when you see things like this, like absurd stuff like this, really. Um, you've got vac vaccines or jabs that are pretty much by the admission of the head of AstraZeneca, by and large clinical trials. Um, and the media doesn't really hide it anymore. They openly came out and first were saying with the AstraZeneca, take it when you, if you're under, I think, I think it was um, over 50s, um, you can take it, but not under, then it's over 60s. And they even said the other day, Someone was actually blatant enough to say, yeah, you know, it, we'll keep changing it, go along, we're still working out what works and what doesn't. So there's not even hiding out of fact, it's just a straight out clinical trial. So this is the kind of craziness for now. Discussions about microchipping will more likely than not come up in the near future. It already has. Um, some parts are already experimenting with them. And of course, we've got these bank bail-in laws where governments will just be able to actually take their citizens' money um and be able to do what and then yeah just to bail out the banks like they did in a gsc but on a much bigger scale so kathy says what was your assessment of the cba and other banks and the banking system having an outreach last week i don't really know i that could just have been a normal downturn or could have been a test run kathy just to see what happened or some kind of testing they were doing so yeah i mean there could be a sinister or could have just been a straight out um ransomware attack you know that I, I don't have a strong opinion that i must admit because it was really just so brief and so minor that at, at worst it was a test run of some kind 
the fact that they use the biosecurity legislation um, to do what they're doing to pretty much suspend rights and the way a state of emergency works is to pretty much suspend people's rights completely. So look no further than the Biosecurity Act. And you cannot ignore the impact of social media in adding to the fear and spreading the message out far and wide. Now, the good news is why it will ultimately, after a time, and this will take time to play out, but it will eventually be a lot better than people think. Because if you see it from another perspective, the opportunity, I mean, we have loved the last COVID, um, last 15 months. It's done absolutely magnificent stuff um, for, um, yeah, magnificent stuff for the world right now, for our, for our business and many of our clients that we know, we have seen do really well in this time. Those who are well positioned and saw how the world is changing and were ready for it are doing really well right now and in the right kind of businesses. Like, extraordinary opportunities we are for business wise i'm not necessarily enjoying a lot of what i see in the world but i can't deny the fact that for business and opportunities i've never seen a time like it there's just so many opportunities we're seeing more local community-based regional areas are prospering in perth or wa now because you can't travel all regional tourism is booked out for like like months ahead now less Reliance on big corporations, people going back to local grocers, local food, getting rid of plastic over here. There's, there's a lot of that kind of stuff happening now. People going back to simplicity. People realising that the importance of, of, of doing ethical, conscious business and a swindling, greed, corruption kind of way of living, like I, I see many have been living and the internet's been the greatest swindle in the world by and large. But it's changing. I'm seeing a lot more the obvious people being shaken out and the good ones are really stepping up more the fourth one is there's actually a very positive impact of social media because you can actually get out there and you can link people together the world is more connected than it ever was before and i think by 10 years time from now i think you'll see profound developments in that area for tremendous um, impact and connection I'm noticing already people becoming much more financially responsible and less entitled, like realizing the importance of valuing money, being rather than being so caught up in speculation, in saving money better, investing it better, being wise with expenses, um, things like that. So that's that'll start happening more and more. It hasn't fully kicked in yet, but as the meltdown starts to happen, people will learn that lesson. And right now, many are learning it already. New economic system, fair and rewarding of productive leaders and industries. And look, basically, ancient prophecy shifting into a golden age and people getting their, prophecy, their priorities right. There's been a lot of talk about that in various books, and the sovereign individual even talks about this a little bit as well. But people will start getting their priorities right and go back into a more community based way of living. So, in saying it, it will get a lot better. But for now, not the time to be in denial, bury your head in the sand, because you certainly don't want to be the wealthiest man or woman in the prison. That's not particularly fun. Where your life and safety is at risk. When civilizations embrace socialism, the reality is this sort of stuff in some parts of it does start happening. Um, as people can't eat and get food, um, they just start, we, we got a taste of it last year with the toilet paper and food runs as lockdowns happen but believe you me if you've got like supply chain breakdowns if you've got um people not working anymore and farms throwing away food this could become a reality in parts of the world and this of course in the great depression i have no doubt we'll see this kind of stuff at some stage a bank run when the bank's basically shut because everyone's running on their money and of course because they're just printing it all out of nothing they can't give people cash so this is one of the reasons why in many of the survival guides that are taught, they always recommend having some cash put aside um, for that reason. So this is the kind of stuff that starts happening. There was a brief taste of this in 2007 in Australia and America, the GFC, but it was fleeting. There will come a time when this will be full on. So you wanna be prepared and ready for the crisis ahead. So what's the solution? So this is probably going to take quicker than I thought. I said 90 minutes, but I reckon it's going to be more somewhere between 60 and 75 minutes, which will actually give time to take some good questions from everyone. So it's going a bit more smoothly than I expected. So safety first is the big thing in this time. 
to really be taking safety and taking good care of your wealth. So keeping wealth is just as important as making it. And that's the big thing to realize right now. Yes, it's great to get into cryptos. It's great to get into learn to trade like my son is. It's great to do businesses. It's great to make a lot of money. But if you make a lot of money, make sure you're taking money aside and you're putting it aside into things and you're investing it and you're putting it into safe haven assets and making sure your wealth is protected. They say the average wealthy person spends 5% of their wealth every year of their, of their income just purely in protecting, insuring and looking after it. So they know what, we're, what I'm talking about here. And when I talk to very wealthy clients, that's exactly what they say. And there's nothing like getting educated. Um, and there's an old proverb that says that without ignorance and forgetting the law, people perish. There was an old saying in the common law that ignorance of the law is no excuse. And unfortunately, that's the way the law works. If you don't know the law, you're not going to be saved when the shit hits the fan. So it's so important to basically know the law, know your rights, know the system, know how to be structured, and not just rely passively on someone, but be properly and duly educated in being a sovereign individual. Because a true sovereign individual takes is a captain of their own ship. They sail it. They have their crew. They direct them. They have their various crew members. Their accountant, their financial expert. They have their health advisor. They have their spiritual mentors or intuitive mediums, as I find more and more have, and like I have. They have their um psychotherapist or someone they can talk to they have their investment advisors they have their cryptocurrency people they have their private investment syndicates but they run their own ship they have no one just tells them what to do and they blindly do it they're educated people they know what they're doing and they've invested well to be educated robert kiyosaki said he spent a lot of money with a major accounting firm just learning about accounting and finances so that he would understand what his accountant was doing so that he didn't get ripped off as he did the first time that he was with an accountant. So now let's look at how you protect your wealth from what's ahead, some steps. So solutions. One of the things that the, the wealthy do is what's called model portfolio. And the basis of this is that if the shit hits the fan, if it really hits the fan, you don't know where it's going to happen. And yes, many will say to you, gold is the answer, but what happens if governments ban gold and order the seizure of gold? And they'll put you in jail like they did in 1933. You know, gold might be the last thing you want. And you may, and it may shoot down in value. Cryptos, many say, is the solution to life. Maybe cryptos is. Maybe Bitcoin will be the real thing, but maybe it won't. Maybe the government will do like China. They'll just ban it and crack down on miners and go and arrest and anyone who's doing Bitcoin mining uh, is effectively running an illegal currency. I mean, happening in China and it could well happen in the United States. And I, in fact, would, I would write it as a 50-50 proposition that will happen in the United States myself. So this is why, yes, I hold cryptos. I do a bit of it, but I certainly don't put my trust in it because if governments just, as people have seen in this current thing, as soon as they got, as soon as Elon Musk and China started playing games with cryptos. Bitcoin has cut in half over the last um, five to six weeks. That shows how vulnerable they actually really are. So stocks and bonds, yeah. Look, the stock market may completely crash and probably will crash a lot, but there's going to be stocks that will do well, very strong companies. Cash and bonds, gold and silver, private investments where you can make a lot of money. So you, the balanced portfolio means that you may lose some things, but if let's say two or three of these categories collapse, but one of them did incredibly well, you're going to end up overall balanced and okay. This is the idea of, of, of a model portfolio. So this is one of the first things I've noticed that many of the elite do. They have some kind of model. And this is an exact kind of thing. This is just giving you a kind of idea. The other thing too is there's six flags to be a sovereign individual is what's taught in the sovereignty movement. So number one is a way to produce your own cash flow. And you can give yourself a tick for each one that you've got, whether you're five out of six, four out of six, three out of six, two out of six, one out of six, or even zero. 
So this means that you're not dependent on a job or on a heavily self-employed thing with one, one or two companies. That's what this means. You've got a business that by and large has clients, you can produce cash flow, and ideally is not vulnerable to too much government regulation taking away your right to run it, like say a doctor or lawyer. I mean, it's better having a medical practice for not having one, but yeah, you get what I'm drift. You got your way to produce your own cash flow. The second one is investment, somewhere to store your wealth, achieve capital growth and residual income. So as you're making your money, you're storing it somewhere, not just spending it on a newer car, a big jet or something like that. Having really good privacy and understanding how to keep yourself relatively private, secure. Another, another one is if you don't have a legacy, life is pretty shitty. It really is. I mean, who wants to come onto a planet, um, work your ass off, make a lot of money and then die and just hand it on with nothing having been done? It's a waste of time. So leaving a legacy, some mission that makes you feel like you've served the earth after you've passed on. The most common one that's coming in tax residency, having structures to minimize your tax and a residency in a different country from where you live. A second citizenship, so you don't depend on a country for your livelihood, ability to travel. Many Australians are wishing they had a second passport right now. So all these kind of stuff are the flags. So at the very least, I tell people you want one and two covered and, I, and three ideally as well. And so I reckon that you want all four of these are uh, very important. You want a cash flow, you want an investment, you want to have some privacy. You definitely want to have a legacy work out. And then the next thing you want to do is ideally some kind of brilliant tax planning. So you want to kind of go through these in stages. So again, I'm getting asked questions about these residency and things like that. Um, like I said, a lot of it I'll answer at the end. The only thing I mentioned on tax residency is yes, there will be rules coming in. I'll go into that shortly. So let's look at some of the things that the wealthy are doing. So precious metals is a very common one that's happening right now. Blockchain and cryptos. But I emphasize, if you're going to do these things, you must understand. So with precious metals, like you buy physical gold, digital gold, coins, nuggets, blocks, do you buy, do you buy on, on shore, offshore in a vault? Those kind of questions. Blockchain, cryptos, do you trade it? Do you hold it? How do you hold it? How secure are you? What's the, 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 the problem that the crypto solves? These are questions there. Very popular is rural land, and this is a survival strategy in the event of apocalypse, I reckon, and getting away from lockdowns in cities, because rural areas, by and large, just have function on relatively unscathed. A safe haven or sanctuary to get away. Jewelry and gems is becoming popular, because if people need to flee a country in certain countries, they can do. Generally, gold is often confiscated. Jewelry on people tends to get left alone, so that's a very common one and these various other investments as well. Elites structure themselves in various ways. So here's a little bit of an interesting fact for you. In 2016, a journalist, Peter Martin, found that of the 56 richest in Australia, two actually paid tax, and this is how much they paid. So one paid 4394, one over 50,000, but they spent over a million dollars on average on their tax advisors. And he concluded tax was optional and the rich know this is the case. So they, they get educated and get the right structures and stay within the law, but get this done. So they keep their wealth independent from governments and they control not own. I cannot emphasize, if governments are gonna go on a raid and steal, rest assured that if you're not protected, your wealth will be will be grabbed. And I don't think a lot would be safe, would be safe in a pure money grab. So many of the wealthy are setting up onshore and offshore solutions like cash held offshore to avoid the bank bailing. They're doing things like gold, gold onshore and offshore is as an example. They're setting up structures overseas to control certain wealth. They're minimizing property purchases out of it in places they're pretty comfortable or a relatively stable government, but are unlikely to just start grabbing properties off people, which often happens in a civilization collapse. They use a lot of offshore structures, um, offices, family offices, foundations to minimize taxes, protect their wealth, and just keep their wealth safe. So having a plan to be building wealth is going to be absolutely protected from what to come. As governments start grabbing money, well, that's like 
as, as critical as you'll get. For example, they use companies. Like I said, all these are like a long module in themselves or training in themselves, but they use companies, they use trust family discretionary trust where they can control them but not own them, give a flexibility, no one actually owns it, which gives them great protection. They set up offshore companies. Hong Kong is still very popular, even though it's a bit more unstable now. It's still quite popular. Singapore is very popular. Great security of vaults. Islands Trust are legendary for the asset protection. Um, you got foundations are very popular. Hey, shell foundations, even Australian foundations are getting popular now because Australia does have very good foundation laws. I do them for clients, certain foundations, and actually they're great for leaving a legacy, but they're amazing for tax and asset protection as well, if correctly structured. And one of the things that governments tend to treat more favorably in Australia than almost anything else. So many are now moving towards a second passport. And quite a number of people of, of the rich in Australia had these ready and when all these lockdowns were happening were already gone from Australia and moved offshore. So it just gives you choices. It doesn't mean you leave, but you've got choices. Overseas tax residency, that's been, Australia have had very favourable laws up until now um, for you to be able to pretty much chuff up and leave. Unlike America, where she had a five-year exit tax, um, which means that pretty much when you left you'd still pay tax up to five years um after you pretty much left uh what's happening now is as countries are running out of money uk in 2015 did something similar and now australia have announced and they haven't given a definite date but you're going to there's two major changes that are happening number one is that they're now attaching residency for pretty much for a three-year period after you leave so this is going to be, that's why many people are scurrying to get out and become non-residents now and while the old laws are so favourable, where right now it's very easy. You could leave tomorrow, get a new residency elsewhere and you're fine. Whereas under the old laws that was allowed, the new laws, you're going to be, it's going to be much harder. You're going to have to effectively pay tax for a few more years before it's finally accepted. And you can't basically spend 45 days or more in Australia. I mean, there's a lot to it. I, I'm not going to go into this in depth. But if you ever were thinking of becoming a non-resident, um, now is the time to move. Um, the other reason too is that Panama Friendly Nations visas right now is the cheapest, most brilliant one in the world. They are changing it from the, from the, from basically the 5th of, um, if you're not in Panama by 5th of August or having, getting it done in the system by then, you'll come under a new regime that will be much more harder and much more expensive. So things are changing fast. So you've got, if you're gonna, if you're thinking about this, you wanna be moving sooner than later. So Bali is one common one that people go to or Thailand, but of course they're tough. They're, they're generally retirees are the ones who can get residencies there a bit easier. Well, Asia has got a really good second home one. So yeah, residency is another way people are doing it. Asset protection is a big one. Just to give you, these are my seven principles of asset protection. Um, feel free to screenshot that and take a picture of it, but control not own. Use structures to own your wealth, be a penniless bum. So own nothing in your own name um, at all. So if you own assets or business in your own name, you're really, really, really vulnerable right now. So it's separate business cash flow structures from investment structures um it's property cash gold silver cryptos and separate structure to any which runs in other words keep your structure separate the last thing that you want is to have a um, structure which holds runs a business and it also holds all your investment and things like that so it's really important right now to do that and ideally, as you start to develop your money, you always, always, always want to have um, wealth in a separate um, sovereign offshore jurisdiction out of an Australia. That's pretty. And review regularly. And having the right team of experts. So one of the things I noticed with the wealthy, they have their team. They have a really good team. They're well-educated. 
they've got um, new things like that. So very, so basically, um, yeah, so having the right team, I cannot emphasize enough of advisors and educators. So it's really the time to take charge of your money and secure your future. There's more opportunity than you could ever imagine possible, um, but you've got to take action pretty quickly. So in summary, what I'll give you three things to do from here. Worst case scenario, take a brutal look, look at everything, of everything that you've learned today and just see what you've got to do and what's missing. And just do a bit of an audit on yourself. And are you fine? Do you know you've got to take some serious action? Number two, specialist advice, get educated in sovereignty. Learn how to keep yourself and your family safe without having to rely on anybody. And please, getting educated. Staying ahead, keeping up to date, do that yourself, or better still, as I did, and most and almost every wealthy person I've met, they become part of a mentoring community or group who can specialise and guide you to a safe haven. Okay, so before we go into what steps you can do from here, are there any questions? Brad says changes to offshore company residency rules as well. Seychelles company could end up being an Australian tax resident. Yeah, look, Brad, my opinion on that is when I read them, I don't think they change things all that much at all. If you read the High Court's Bywater investment cases, um, it's just defining economic control and management. If anything, I prefer the new rules because they at least give more certainty, whereas the old rules, um, which followed the High Court, it just wasn't really all that clear, whereas I don't actually have a problem with those. So do I help um, non, do you help um, non all these Justin tasks? Absolutely we do, yeah, depending on what Justin, but yes, we definitely do in that. And it asks, if we move assets of trust or like own nothing, how does that prevent the Australian government from taking control of these assets? Could they change the law? Look, and it, they can do what they want if they're a crime syndicate. Um, it's like in theory, the government could come up tomorrow and say, everyone must take a vaccine or you'll be tied out of the table and pushed into you. The reality is, I doubt that will happen in Australia because most people with a bit of extortion, a bit of threats will just do it. That's the reality, as horrible as it sounds. So by and large, a lot of people they'll accept and they'll just leave them alone. So my feeling is there'll be plenty of people who are poorly structured, poorly set up, done enough things that they'll be able to do stuff about it. So yes, in theory, they could do that. But I think you'll find there are plenty of people who don't have proper structuring and things like that. And then the next level step is that's why many go offshore because the Australian government can't really do much about money you've got in Singapore or in Switzerland or things like that. So what do you think about retirement savings? Um, well, it's actually said in the Great Reset that retirement savings are on the table to be grabbed. If you read Robert Kiyosaki's recent webinars and his recent teachings, he reckons the first things that will collapse will be pension funds in the US. So he reckons retirement funds are in horrendous trouble. So um, Bradley says, in terms of offshore and other citizenship, having come from South Africa, Australia was, was part of the strategy from comparing us to the rest of the world through COVID. I wonder even if everything else is going to shit during the Great Reset. I battle to see how other countries like Bali, UK, US be faring any better or more attractive. Well, yeah, for now, but you don't know what's going to happen, Brad. I mean, you look at what's happening in Melbourne. Melbourne is like, the stuff happening in Melbourne is some of the, as bad as many of the worst dictatorships in the world right now. So, yes, that's right now. So this is, um, this is why the wealthy have second citizenships and now. Yeah, you might stay in Australia, but if you've got a proper residency and passport offshore, it's much easier to go offshore and move there. Um, I think that's Carla, is it? We're investing in property. Should this be structured under trust or in your own name? Gosh, that's a complicated question. And it depends on the purpose and a number of things, like are you negatively geared, for example? So yeah, if you're negatively geared, you may you have to get careful advice before you do that. 
And if I want to get foreign um, residency with Panama, what is involved? Would I have to move and live there? Could I live in Australia and be a resident of Panama? I have three citizenships, but none of these sovereign. Yeah, look, that's a fairly... You would have to... Panama is the best right now because you only have to go there for a couple of weeks a year um, or every two years. It's very simple. But yes, you can't live in Australia and be a resident of Panama. That's an easy one. Um, especially with the new rules coming in, you can't be in Australia for more than 45 days a year. So... Someone asked for the last slide. Um, I'll give it to you for 10 seconds to take a quick screenshot, and then I'm going straight back to the questions. So that's the last slide. Okay, so now a few more questions. Jason, what countries have the best, um, e easiest second passport um, programs? Um, yeah, look, that's a whole different question, Jason. I know we're talking with you separately, so happy for us to talk to you as part of that. But there's a lot to that. What offshore jurisdictions do you expect to be stable and trustworthy in the coming decade? Yeah, that's just a big gamble. Um, it's hard to say. Um, places like, the more remote, the better. So I, I just think it's quite simple. I think certain regional areas like Costa Rica and some of the more regional areas quite possibly, um, Seychelles possibly, but it's just hard to say right now. It's it's really taking a gamble. I just think that most countries, you've got to more go out regional, but yeah, Costa Rica at the moment seems to be one. Some of the islands like Vanuatu, places like that, but yeah, it's just, that's a hard question to answer right now. So generally, it's having a diversification um, strategy, so to speak. So, yeah, Justin McKenna, yeah, look, but Canada, we don't do a lot with, I'll be honest with you on that one. So, what's this one here? Um, Perry, if I have citizenship in another country, do we register using our home countries? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that, that's a more specific advice question. I can't really answer that one. Okay, Perry, how long do we have to get started on setting up residency in Panama? Not long at all. You've got about six, by 5th of um, August, um, it's going to have changed radically. It's going to be a lot more expensive, Perry. So, so Brad, if your income is via investment trading and you remain a Australian resident, how low, low with onshore and offshore countries and trusts can you get your percentage of tax paid? Yeah, the problem is the law is so strict now, it's possible to set up like offshore non-investing trusts and that, but they're going to have to have foreign controllers. Generally, I say to people, unless you've got a good couple of hundred thousand to set things up to meet the very strict laws under the economic management and foreign company and that kind of stuff and getting the proper custodian trust in agreement, I just tell people, if you really want to make sure you're compliant, you do what the big players do, you've got to have a good 100, 200 grand minimum ready to structure yourself to do it properly. Otherwise, don't even bother. You'll get yourself into all kinds of trouble. Martin, how can they introduce new walls? They won't allow anyone to leave. I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that one. Paul, what are going to be the best options after the Panama Friendly Nations expires? Um, yeah, well, it's still going to be available, but it's going to be more expensive. So it's still going to be a good one. It'll just cost a lot more money. That's that simple. And it depends on the purpose. Like some of them require living there for bits. So yeah, it depends on the purpose. Like Costa Rica, Malta can be pretty good, but they will have a certain limited living requirement. So does James Packer have other things here? Um, I'm presuming he does. And it given the great reset will affect all countries, which is the least likely countries to, to change their own laws and take control of our assets. Yeah, that's actually a good question because one of the things I do predict, Danny, and this is the thing we won't really know until time goes on, but I do predict, and from my research and talking with people, that the big thing that's going to happen over the next little while, over the next coming years, is the world is going to break up into three groups as a rule. 
One is going to be the New World Order group. One is going to be the China or Asia group. Another one's going to be the sovereign group. And then eventually, as other things fall apart, more and more become sovereign. So the there will basically be a small number of nations that will virtually say, no, we're not doing it. You're already seeing signs even within parts like Florida has just straight out just gone, no, nope, we're not forcing these stupid passports on people. And you're giving an incredible array of freedoms to their citizens over there. And you're going to find more countries will do that. Like, you know, I, I, like Estonia might do it, for example. You may find Seychelles do it or they may not. Um, you may even find parts of Australia might do it. Yeah, it's a bit of a lottery, really. But there's going to be places that will do that will actually do that will do that, and you and you're probably going to get some surprises. So, and more and more citizens will migrate there as it happens. So, Armin says, "Do you think once the reset occurs, will Australia be an okay place to live?" Look, it's hard to say. Um, depends where I wouldn't live in Melbourne if my life depended on it right now, um, or Victoria. Am I okay in WA? I'm reasonably happy over here, um, especially with our big regional areas. There's places that one can always go if things get pretty bad. So I myself am reasonably okay with that over here. Okay. Tim, when offshoring wealth overseas, are there strategies to overcome tax if bringing money back to Australia to spend? Yeah, look, that's a difficult question to answer. Best to keep it offshore entirely, only because these days with the offshore strict rules, we don't do stuff which involves any kind of hiding or dubious stuff. We, that's why I said, Tim, 100 or 200 grand to do it properly, like Malcolm Turnbull and Mitt Romney, uh, for example, and Bill Shorten. It's well known they've got offshore stuff, but they spend a fortune to have properly structured places and things like that. And generally, my understanding is they do keep their offshore wealth offshore and they have their onshore wealth where they make money and things like that. So, Jason, which country is the most favorable tax retirement regimes? Panama? Yeah, look, ba apparently with Bali, Malaysia, Thailand, there's quite a few of them, Jason, that have got that. And again, happy to talk to you because I know we've got some meetings planned on that. So. Okay, everyone. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move through and just go through. Um, when for those that have a couple of hundred grand to spare, the setup means we're doomed. I don't know your situation. So, um, but the more wealth you've got, the easier. If you don't, well, you want to get started, at least do what you can, Wing. That's my short answer to that one. So, okay. So, from here, what's next? So really, you've got three choices from here. And one is do what most people are going to do. That's just do absolutely nothing at all. That's just the reality of what most people do. The easiest thing to do right now is go and watch Netflix, hope that none of this happens, um, go out to the pub or go out with your friends and just have some fun, go out and play sport and just think the last thing I want to do is just take the hard decisions and start learning to invest and even taking some investing or go and start work on a business or a new source of income, which is hard work or things like that. That's, that's the first thing you can do. And that's the reality what most of Australia are doing. And my experience on webinars, probably a large number of people do because that is the easiest thing to do. And it's naturally um, psychologically to justify it in our minds to actually just so, to, to give a reason why you're not taking action, but do nothing at all. That's why most people get really badly stung when these things happen, just like they did in the Great Depression, as they did in Cyprus. And, and that's why I have no doubt that when the bank runs come, people will be running. That's why last year when they were talking about vaccines and things like that, it never, I was probably the least fussed about vaccinations being forced upon me if I wanted them or not than anyone, because I was like, you know what? I don't have the slightest doubt that the vast majority will take it because I said, Many will claim they won't, but when they realize they can't have their job, their financial security threat, and they can't travel to Hawaii to visit their favorite stripper, as Abby Chatfield said, that she can't go and get laid in um, Vegas. That's actually what she said. Um, people play this sport. Um, someone go and become a um, pilot or someone, you know, wants to be able to go and get drunk in their favorite pub without any restrictions. 
Well, as oh, Mr. Biden openly says now, and the NFL have just said that if you're vaccinated, you can come in the change rooms, no problem. If you're playing, you're not, you've got to be COVID tested every day, things like that. So I think there'll be enough extortion, enough people without enough mental strength or understanding of their rights. But I thought, you know what, I'm not really bothered by it. I'm for that reason, because most people will do absolutely nothing. And that's the horrible truth. The second, so they'll just follow the masses and do every mental justification to create a story. Hopefully that's not going to be too many of you, but my guess is there will be some of it. The other one is to see someone you currently trust. So if you do have someone that you actually trust and that you like and that you really do believe, you know, that you work with and they've got you in good hands, you just come here for some a bit more knowledge to see if it supplements what you've already got, that's great. You know, keep working with them and just please, anything you see that you and that person are not doing, take some action and take advantage and, you know, do it with our blessing. The purpose is to educate and help you and make sure you can move forward. Three is that if you don't have someone to help you, take action and actually get specialist help to educate you and advise you properly on the next step forwards. So who here, resonates with this option. Who here is interested to know more what you can do? No obligation. Okay, a few people, just type in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, yep, plenty of people raising their hands. Great. Okay, great, so plenty of people. So if you're willing to invest in it, and I stress that because there's plenty of places you can go online and do your own research, and that is one way you can go. At least if it's given you a kick up the ass to move off and do your own research, then great. Go off and do your own research, take the kick up the ass and do something about it. But if you'd like to get some help and guidance from experts to save you time, and in the long run, make you a lot more money than you'd ever make, which is, will help you do that, like what I chose to do with what I'm doing, here's what you would do next. So again, there's three choices. Number one is just don't do anything at all. In other words, that is your choice. Just don't, don't fill out what we're saying. Just go away and pretend this webinar never happened. Number two is we have a program called the Ignite. And what I'm doing is I'll share with you what our programs are. And then if you're interested, no obligation, you can book in for a free call. But this is where we'll be showing you what they are. The business for people who are in business, self-employed, a bit of an income, but still quite new to the concept of being self. In other words, you've got a bit of an idea, but this is really quite new for you. So this is more do-it-yourself. So there's a welcome call, but not really about one-on-one -on -one advice. This is for those who just are like, you know what, Warren, I can do it. I can do it myself. I'm happy to go along and put the time in and educate myself and things like that. But yeah, you'll be educated, you'll get a welcome call, you'll be able to ask queries and email us and things like that. And you get really what I call training and sovereignty in all seven areas of life. And we do weekly webinars to guide you in the process and give you mentoring, so I speak as a group. So it's like a group mentoring program um, set up to be you know, affordable, to be workable and get you good results. So with all the underground knowledge, and this is for someone you're pretty self-sufficient, you can get in and do it yourself, and you're still relatively new to it all. You'd love to learn about things like about conscious health. We have a wonderful GP who teaches about everything about health, maintaining your top health. He comes and speaks for us. We've got um, all kinds of different things. We have a legal rights, which we're looking at doing a program to actually help people master their own rights to protect themselves and understand with governments with everything on masks on jabs all that kind of stuff so this is for you to learn from people where it's not just me we've got a great team of people where you really learn the best stuff so you get lifetime course access once you do it and you get three months access to our live webinars and queries to fast track so that's the ignite the accelerator program, this is, you really are ready and you, you're very serious. This is more you're really serious. You want to not only get some one-on-one -on -one kind of, or get some um, do it yourself, but you're like, now I actually want a bit of help and some, and some advice and some guidance. And I really know I've got to put in a good 12 months, not a good three months. 
and this is generally someone you know a little bit more where you're going. In other words, you, you're kind of, you know a little bit more. It doesn't mean you're an expert on it. I mean, that's why you join the program, but you know a little bit more about it and you really are ready to take some pretty damn serious action. You wanna protect your wealth from the great reset and be part of the wealth transfer and you're keen to take advantage of opportunities, create passive income. The thing with this group is that those who are in it right now love it because it's a bit of a stream to go into other things like these groups who are now in private equity investment syndicates for opportunities before they hit markets. There's others who joined programs to learn how to trade. My son actually did that. He joined one of the programs. That's how my 17 year old's making his own income now. He did one of the programs from the accelerator. That's actually what he did. So there's cryptocurrencies learning how just to do that in a safe way and learn and learn how it basically works. Not what I call a quick guarantee to be a millionaire, more designed for safety and being able to master it. So this is more advanced. This is where you get like that. The Ignite does have a bit on cryptos. This really goes into stuff. You, you have advanced training on this. You have premium advice and you get one-on-one -on -one session. And right now, for those who basically do end up joining the accelerator out of this, it's gonna be with me. So I will actually give the session. So you actually get two sessions, how I do it. So you have an initial session, you then go away and, I, and we summarize our thoughts and send them to you. And then we have a follow-up session to really go through it and make sure, as well as having part of a 12 month program. So it's generally very good value. And this is the one we find the most popular because we make this very, very high value. And generally this is where people get pretty exceptional results. So. Like I said, it and how it works, how do you know which is the right one for you? It's really simple. Grace, who's my business partner, gives a, a free call for people to see if you're fit for the club. And she's happy to have a good chat with you, go through your situation and make sure that if we can't help you or we don't think it's the right fit, you walk away and you don't pay anything. The only thing you invested is your time. So, and knowing it's not for you. Because we would rather get a small number of people who are really serious and ready to go and then basically a whole lot of different people who we really can't help. Well, I'd rather from this webinar get two or three people who get spectacularly good results because you put the work in. That's how we work. So just give us a bit of an idea. Is anyone, so who's interested in basically this? And if so, which one? Is it number two, the Ignite, or number three, the Accelerator? I'll assume you're number one. You're going to basically, you know, either work out yourself or whatever. So just type in a two or three, and this doesn't oblige you to anything. It's just to give us a bit of an idea. Yep, okay, three, few people, three, couple twos. Um, Aiden Ignite to start, yeah, absolutely. It's a great starting point, Aiden Ignite. We find that an accelerator is for those who are like, yep, no, I'm ready to kick ass and do this. So great, there's quite a few here. So perfect, everyone. Laura's free. Yep, great. And Harlan. Um, yeah, Brad is possibly both. If you try to accelerate, you automatically get access to Ignite, Brad. That's how that works. So, okay, great. Now, quite a few. So this is how it works. Let me just quickly show you how this will work from here in how we do it. So we do get you to complete an application and that's only because we want to make sure that when Grace has the call with you, she's got all the information to give you maximum time and value. So what we do is like we said, make sure you're a good fit to work with us. It's like a applying. So this is how it works. I'm going to take you to the site and just quickly show you how it goes. So I'm just going to take you to the Global Wealth Club. So when you come here, you just go to this page, globalwealthclub.org, and you book it. So what will happen is this. You will actually get, you put your details in here. You click here what's most interesting you. Is it that? Is it that? Is it that? If it's a few of these, just put something else and then just make sure you fill out the details or, or, or better still, just put the one that's most important for you and why you're doing it. And then what will happen is you'll be given a, a, a questionnaire. It'll take about 10 minutes of your time to complete. 
and where you can um, actually go ahead and go from there. So you complete the application form and go from there. The other thing too, is for those of you who live in Perth, there's actually gonna be a live event happening most likely. It's only gonna be a small private event in the next month. If you're gonna be interested in that, complete the application and just make sure you let us know, okay? So, okay, so who here is gonna complete an application or who here is gonna put in a form and keen to do that? There's gonna be a, appointment calls free from Grace um, with next week. She's in an event this week, but from next week onwards. Okay, seven people raise hands, great. Quite a few others I'd imagine too. Okay, everyone. So any final questions or comments about there? Anything you want to clarify about that form, about the process, just to make sure you're clear. Like I said, it's a no obligation. The questionnaire is really good because we get a chance to go through it before it. If it's obvious even from the questionnaire we're not a fit, we won't waste your time. You know, Grace will respect that and we'll, we'll respond to you and even give you some links where you could go and have a look at yourself. If we think there's a fit then, or if we think there's possibly, we absolutely will have a call. And it says, can we join the live Perth session via Zoom? Yeah, look, I don't see why not. We're gonna be having a small one in a private room, but we probably will open it up for live stream. It's gonna be a sovereign individual event and I'm gonna be going through some of my really good stuff. My only thing is I've got no plans to record that event because I'm gonna really go into some really good stuff. So although we're gonna live stream it, we're, we may be willing to live stream it, we just wanna make sure it's not gonna be recorded or anything like that. That's the plan of the event. So Sandra, can you just do the crypto and trading with the whole course? Look, Sandra, the short answer is you can. Um, you just complete the application form because you can join it and just access certain parts and then we work out something from there. So the short answer is yes, that is possible. So any more questions? It's pretty flexible. You know, we've got our standard and things like that. So any more questions or final comments? Armin, thank you. Oh, my pleasure, Armin. Look, thank you everyone for listening. I appreciate it when people put their time in. Karen, is this only for people who have lots of money? Well, no, not necessarily. Um, the, the Ignite, Karen, is, is for people who don't necessarily have a lot. They may have a reasonable income or may have a business, self-employed or a job or whatever. But yeah, the Ignite's more for people who really are getting started and want to fast track things. So thank you all for all these kind words, everyone. So thank you very much for your kind words, everyone. And okay, everyone. So go and have a really good night, please. And I'll see some of you there. So Brad, would an offshore appointment be with Vina? Yeah, if it's for pure tax planning, Brad, yes, that is correct. You would just go um, and go that path. No, we don't. I don't do by the hour consultations, Martin. Um, you'd have to go through... Wealth Safe, our other com company, which my business partner runs for that. So www, I'll put it in the chat for you, dot wealthsafe.com. But yeah, so being an office packages or to work with work one on one consult, I don't do that as such. No, only for people who join the club. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thanks everyone. I'll see you all later.